Today is the dedication, the area of parent and child, because I say that because it's very important that we understand what has happened here. But one of the most rewarding things in life is a person's relationship with God. I'm here to tell you there's nothing like it. You will never be lonely again. You have the presence and the power of God dwelling with inside of you when you have that relationship with God. The second most rewarding and sometimes I might add by some experience and most frustrating is your relationship with your family. How many of you have ever had one of those situations where you are just frustrated? Maybe at your sibling, maybe as a parent at your child, maybe as a child at your parent. We have those frustrations that come into our lives, but yet that is the second most rewarding event that you will ever experience is your relationship with your family and your children. There are many things that we can learn. And when you bring God into the family, your family has, the, has a far better chance of surviving whatever happens if God's in the midst of your family. There are many people who God is not in the midst who are not turning to God and asking and seeking, and yet they face the, the situation of raising their child without the presence of God. Raising a family has never been easy. Amen? Amen. Amen. And might I ask, when do you quit being a parent to your child? Never. You never and your child will always be an important part of your life and your heart. We are so aware of that. So raising a family has never been easy, especially in the generation that we're living in now. And we must realize that each child is a gift from God. Each child is different. So it is fitting for us to raise them up in the ways of God. And in essence, we must realize Basically, that dedication is essential. And I want you to understand that. The, the concept of dedicating yourself or dedicating your child is essential. I want to take you to the old passage in the book of Psalms. It's one that uh, Miss Sandy will tell you that uh, I used to use quite often in the process of us having our children and all. Because listen to what it says in the book of Psalms. Psalm 127 Beginning with verse 1, it says this, Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman watcheth but in vain. It is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows, for so he giveth his beloved sleep. Now listen to verse 3. Lo, Children are a heritage of the Lord. Now you need to take note of that. Children are a heritage of the Lord. Ch children are very important. It is basically God's gift. So he says children are the heritage of the Lord and the fruit of the womb is his reward. As arrows are in the hand of a mighty man, so are children of thy youth. We began to shape our children. We began to sharpen them in so many different aspects. And so we can begin to see this. But look at verse 5. Happy. You get that word? Happy. I've been around some parents that really don't act happy with their children. Happy is the man that hath his quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but they shall speak with the enemies in the gate. So we begin to see that God's word uh, in, endorses this act of being a parent, of having children. And so children are vital and very important to us. So let me give you a little bit of concept in the area of understanding baby dedication. 
Now you need to understand what baby dedication is because uh, we as individuals, we are uh, different than some other uh, denominations in the, the response of what we are actually doing. And so let me say that baby dedication primarily, number one, primarily is for the parents. Your child or the children that we dedicate, and might I ask, or let me say this, might I say this, that you don't have to come into the presence of the church to dedicate your child to God. You can do this anytime you so desire. I remember when our children were born, uh, we, uh, uh, when we left the hospital and when we had the opportunity, we went by the church that we was members of there in Miami and we dedicated our two oldest children to the Lord. It was them and us in the presence there of the church. We also dedicated the others. It is an opportunity for you to say, I recognize this child and I am going to do, it is about me, I will do whatever it takes to help my children by me dedicating myself. Your child does not remember those events unless you tell them about it. And that's what Deuteronomy uh, encourages us to share with them and to tell them. Secondly, let me say that it's, uh, at first, it's primarily for the parents. Secondly, it's not baptism. Understand that, please. Know that we do not practice infant baptism. We feel that an infant child up into the age of accountability is saved and covered by the grace of God. That is how God just works because they don't realize a lot of things and that's where the parental responsibility comes in of training that child and raising that child in a very special way. And we believe that an individual must make the decision to receive Jesus Christ for themselves. Do you understand what I'm saying? That child cannot understand, especially a baby that is unable to talk. So we begin to see this concept. It's not baptism. Let me give you the definition of dedication. The definition of dedication is this. The quality of being dedicated or committed to a task or purpose. Now let me say this. When you become a parent, you need to be a parent to the very end. You need to fulfill that process. You need to stay focused. You have a purpose, and that purpose is to raise that child till the child finally flies on their own. And then even that, you're there for words of, of wisdom and encouragement along the way. So we begin to see. We have a better understanding of what transpired today. Uh, this is the process of where the parents are saying, I realize how important it is that God has given me this child and I want to give this child back to God. Let me give you some tips for the journey. Parenting is a journey. And as you have ventured over the years to take journeys and, and uh, vacations, if you call them that, you have experienced all kinds of things along the way. Sometimes you, you may have uh, never had a problem when you've had a journey. Listen, if you never have a problem when you take a vacation with family, you are blessed. It always seemed that something would go wrong. The tire would blow out, and where was the tire? Underneath all the luggage in the back of the vehicle. And then the tire you got out to put on there didn't have enough air. And that's when you was praying, Lord, I wish the hot air my children had was in over here blowing this tire up. We have the concept of realizing that the journey and what happens is in the area for the tips for the journey is I've got several things and I'm going to go through them kind of rapidly, but I want you to get the, the gist of them. Number one, the first thing that you, are, you need to realize, the tips for the journey of raising children is this, pray often, okay? Pray often. Now let me say this. I know individuals who aren't even really strong believers in Christ who are raising children and they will often pray because children will sometimes lead you to be praying for them. 
They get sick. They get involved in things that they shouldn't. And it weighs heavily upon your heart. And you're just in that concept of saying, well, I need to pray for my child. I may not go to church. I may not practice religion. But praying, you will be, listen, you will literally be brought to your knees at times in your child's life where they are sick and you don't know what's going on and the doctors don't know what's going on. And you'll begin to say, you'll call out in prayer. So pray. Pray often and learn as you pray, we begin to say. Well, the second thing that I want you to realize is tips for the journey is be a genuine example. This is where we've got to begin to focus. We've got to begin to look at this concept of a genuine example. That is, we've got to know that our life matters. Your child looks at you more than anyone else. And they, let me say, unfortunately begin to imitate us at times. So we need to be a genuine example. We need to be individuals who, who believe in God. We profess God. We focus upon God. We are a genuine example. And that is the concept of what we are. Second, uh, thirdly, in the area of moving on. Thirdly, you as a parent, I'm going to tell you this. And it's a secret you as a parent are going to make mistakes in raising your children. So thirdly, we need to admit your mistakes. It is not wrong for you to go back to your child and say, look, the punishment that I just gave you is a little extreme. I thought about it, but you still need to be punished. So therefore, I am going to reduce the 100-year punishment that you got to where you can never date another individual is eliminated. I'm going to reduce it to 50 years. No, you get the picture. Or I'm going to take your cell phone away that you'll never have it back again. I mean, there are times that we need to come back to the respons responsibility, being genuine to them and say, hey, I want you to understand, I'm sorry. Isn't that good advice? To admit your mistakes, to say, I'm sorry. That relates even into the area of the husband and wife team. That your children need to see you acknowledge and say, listen, I'm sorry. I overreacted. I didn't listen to you. I didn't pay attention. And we begin to admit our mistakes in the area of our children. And it will make the family unit grow much better. Number four is the area of the, the responsibility tips for the journey. Is that we need to love our children unconditionally. Being a father of four children, I realize that each child is unique. No two are the same. I always said, well, if I had uh, twins or triplets, they'd all be the same. Wrong. Each one is unique in their own ways. They may look alike. They may act alike. And I can say honestly that some of our children act alike. They don't look alike, but they act alike. And that is the responsibility for us to love them unconditionally. They are going to do things that you prayed would never happen, and they did it anyway. And you can either choose to love them or to abandon them. Love them unconditionally. Number five, keep them God-focused. Keep them focused upon God. Now, how do we do that? We do that in the area of our home life. It is your responsibility to be the figure of God in their presence of, of, of having passages that are available. The Bible uh, there on the tables around you to where they begin to see the importance of God. To realize that, that when church day comes, whenever that is for you, when church day comes, we are going to serve God. We're going to be faithful to God. We are going to keep them God focused. We are going to help them to realize how important God is in our lives. Number six is the area of celebrate their accomplishments. That is, your child will make some accomplishments, and, and basically you're going to say, well, that's just a small accomplishment. I don't need to recognize that. 
wrong. You need to recognize every accomplishment your child does, whether small or big. You see, it's an accomplishment that we need to recognize. And when your child does anything good, they need to be told that. So basically, you need to come and you need to celebrate the accomplishments that they make. Number seven, let me encourage you to, to be open to this. There are going to be times that your child, and you need to realize, and you need to laugh with your child. You need to begin to lighten up a little bit and have some fun. Watch some uh, movies that make you both laugh and laugh with them. But on the flip side of that, not only should you be able to laugh with them, but you should be able to cry with them. So laugh and cry with your child. There will be hurts. There will be things that happens. Their best friend, their boyfriend, their girlfriend has hurt their feelings. Don't just tell them to suck it up and get on with life. Empathize. Cry with them. Laugh with them. Enjoy them. And I say that we need to enjoy them because the reality is, as a parent, you have your child for approximately 18 years, and then they're out on their own. And let me tell you something, those 18 years fly by very quickly. You close your eyes and they're in school. You close your eyes again and they're in high school. You close their eyes again and they're entering into the adulthood and marriage. So laugh and cry because one day one day, you wish you had another year with them. Well, let me go to number eight. Tips for the journey. And we've got a generation today that needs to understand what your child needs. Your child needs a parent. So you must remember you are their Parent, we got so many today who don't want to be their parent to their child. We have abandoned children all around us. And then we have some of the parents who say, well, I just, I just, I don't want to punish my child because I want to be a friend to my child. God didn't call you to be the friend aspect. He called you to be a parent. And your child will look at you at times and, and say, you're the worst parent ever. But that's okay. Because when they turn 18, they're out on their own. And God, listen, up until the time that they go out on their own, you as a parent are responsible. And I'm going to say it like this. You are responsible for every action your child gets involved in. You say, well, what if they hang with the wrong? You are the parent. You say, you set the parameters of your family. Don't back down. Don't compromise in that. We have biblical principles that gives us the insight to where we know that we are to be their parent. And parenting is not for wimps. It's not easy. It's not easy to say no to the child you love, but you are the parent. And might I even add in that, when you go to the concept that you are the parent, be careful on the sources that you sometimes search diligently to find out answers to your child. And Facebook, or as I prefer, Faceplant, instructs you to do this, or TikTok, or Snapchat, or your friends, all these individuals have their opinion, but let me tell you something, they don't have your child, and your child's different, I guarantee it. 
There are no two exactly alike. And so where do we go? What do we as individuals do in the area of finding resources that are available to us? Let me encourage you and understand this. God will help you. You see, when you begin to focus upon God, the whole demeanor changes. You're not raising your child by your own power, your own strength, your own ability, but you're raising your power with the help of God. And let me tell you something, God knows your child better than anybody. And when God knows your child better than anyone, He will give us the insight. He will instruct us. Now, in Psalm 27, verse 1, it said this, Except the Lord, you get the picture here? Except the Lord build the house. Now, I've always held to the fact that this is talking more into the structure of the family unit. That's why he's talking about children. Except the Lord build the house. People, let me tell you something. Your house is wherever you are. Your home is wherever you are. It doesn't matter the building, the structure that you're living in. But it does matter if God's building it or not. Except the Lord. So first I tell you, in order to receive God's help and to realize that our help comes from God, number one, you as a parent, as a a, an adult as an individual who has taken on that responsibility you need to put your trust in him put your trust in him I'm talking about put your trust in God God knows how to raise children now even sometimes when God has chosen it, the children of Israel they were rebellious but God knows how to raise children let me say this God knows how to design children he did a pretty good job I mean, you, you think about all the, the complexity of us as individuals and you realize that God knows how to design. So I can put my trust in Him and God uh, will help us through this process. But what we fail to realize while we put our trust in God, we realize that there is a second concept that we need to realize in order of raising our children we need to secondly, we need to read his parental or parenting manual. You know what his parenting manual is? It's the Bible. It's the forgotten book of many individuals. We sometimes say, well, yeah, I'll, I'll dust it off and I'll bring it here on Sunday. But it is that concept where we begin to see and understand his uh, parenting manual. As Psalm 119 verse 105 says this, it, 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 it just gives us this insight where it begins to establish and say to us as individuals, thy word. What's that? The Bible. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Well, how are we going to know how to discern and how to raise our children when we're going to the secular word of individuals and we're not turning to the one source that knows creation better than any? That is the word of God. So we turn to God. We read his parental or parenting manual, his parenting guides. So secondly, we read the parenting manual. Thirdly, we need to follow his sacrifice or his, his uh, basically his example, and that is the area of sacrifice. We need to come to the process of getting into the realization that following his example, the example of Jesus Christ is a sacrifice. God sacrificed for you. God made sacrifice, and I'm here to tell you, as a parent, you will sacrifice for your child. I guarantee you will give up sleep to calm that crying child down. Amen? Yes. Sacrifice. You will do without so your child will have. Sacrifice. It is a process in which Christ taught us that other people are important. 
And let me tell you something, your child is of utmost importance. There are numbers of children here in the United States who have no parent. They have been thrown out of the house, put out of the house, rejected by their parent. Because their parent didn't want to make the sacrifice. Do you understand that is the process of what has happened in our culture that helped to bring about the abortion issue? They didn't want to make the sacrifice of changing their lifestyle. People, you're only changing it for a short period of time. And then you can go back to whatever you was before. Sacrifice. Make a sacrifice for your son or your daughter. Because one day we know they will be gone. The, the greatest thing you as a parent can do for your child is to dedicate yourself. And the dedication is to bring your child up to know your faith and your trust in the Lord. And lead by example, not just word. So when they see the example that you set before them when they get older, they will want, they will want to have a relationship with the God you trusted in. They see how genuine you are. And they want what you have. Because the world doesn't have it. And so I ask each and every one of us today, are you dedicated to be the person God wants you to be? It's a very probing question. Because if you're not, I can assure you that the next generation or your child when it reaches the age to where they began to go out on their own, it's not going to be much better. It will be worse. We see that happening in our culture today. So if we dedicate ourselves to be the person that God would have us to be and God wants us to be, then we're going to seek God and we're going to say, God, help me Raise my son, my daughter, in the best way possible. Help me to keep them close to you. That's dedication. And you will see it as you stay close to the Word of God. Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that built it. And we begin to see and to under, understand children, children are important to God. Jesus said, let the children come. Come as children. Seek Him. And when you come to seek Jesus Christ, He can be found. Let's go to God in prayer.